10 different ways that you can make a million dollars for little or zero money down. And you can apply this to $1,000, $100, $100 million. You can do any of these things and add or detract the amount of zeros that you feel comfortable with. The first thing that you can do if you want to make a million dollars, you can sell something for a million dollars. And as crazy as what I'm saying sounds, you absolutely can sell something for a million dollars. If you go to an e-commerce store and they're doing $100 million a year and you say, hey, if I can increase your conversion across your entire site, rewrite your emails, redo your landing pages, and I can get you a 5% list can I get 1% of that? So you make them an extra 5 million a year and you get one. Do you think you can do that? Yes. Why are you going to be able to do so much? Not because of you, but because of who they are. You make a million dollars by selling someone else five to $10 million of value. And if you're like, I don't know how to do that. That's fine. But accept that you don't know how to do that. And then say, I want to learn how to do that. And then go get the skill of doing that. And then you can go sell it. But you can't say that you don't have the money and that's why you can't make money. The second one is that you can borrow a million dollars and then buy something and have someone else pay it back. It's fundamentally what real estate is. You borrow money to buy an asset. You put tenants into the asset. They pay off off the money that you never had. That is what real estate is. And I'll tell you a quick story on this. So a buddy of mine got into real estate, was flipping houses, didn't think there was a lot of money in it, was like, oh, this sucks, there's so much work and there's all this tent, you know. So he ended up buying a 14 unit apartment building with someone else's money, he didn't have any, bought the apartment building and then sold it four months later for $500,000 more. And he made 500 grand in one transaction. And so then he realized that the more expensive the building he sold, the more money he made. Then he started getting into commercial real estate, which is even more expensive. He's like, wait a second, I can buy something for 10 million and then I can flip it to somebody for 13 and not even hold on to it for that long. He started flipping 30 or 40 of these a year with just him and a couple of VAs. Number three is you refinance something for more than you bought it. So if you're like, but I don't know if they'll do that. They will if it's priced low enough. So if you have to go talk to a thousand building owners, you will probably get one of them who's willing to depart for their thing for significantly less than it's worth and a bank will loan the difference and you don't have to put any money down out of pocket. Let's say you have a $100,000 house and you get it under contract for $80,000 from them saying that they're willing to give you the house for $80,000. And then you say, cool, I can give you 70 and then you got to seller finance me the 10 over the next five years. And they say, sure. And now all of a sudden you just got to get the bank and the bank finance is 80%. And now you actually just made the difference if you wanted to. And you can take that number and you can do it at $100 million. You can do it at any of these levels. But that's the concept. Does that make sense? Number four is that you get a contract for something for less than it's worth and then you sell that contract. An option is a contract to say that you will be able to buy something at a future date at a price that is agreed upon today. That's what an option is. If I agree upon a price to somebody today, then I, as the person who's getting the option, is hoping that it is worth more than that. The person who's selling the option is hoping that it's either worth less than that in the future or doesn't think it's gonna change significantly and will just get paid for that tiny option for the contract itself. Let's say you've got a million dollar house. Now you call a bunch of houses, you're gonna be offering 20% below what the market rate is that you believe the house is worth. Eventually you're gonna to get to somebody who's like, you know what, I've had this house for 30 years, I bought it for $10 and now it's worth 800 grand. You know what, I'll take the 800 grand. You think it's worth more than the 800 grand. And you say, thank you, I'm gonna send you a DocuSign. They sign the DocuSign that you have an option period to flip the house. You could go to a real estate investor and say, hey, I have a house for $900,000 on sale, right? It's worth a million. And the guy says, okay, sure, I'll sign for 900. This guy's gonna put 900 in. You're gonna pay 800 to this person and then you make the 100 in between and you put no money down. The next one you can do is that you can sell something that's really expensive and get a commission. Sounds really simple. You sell a skyscraper that's a $100 million skyscraper, you'll get three, 4% of that deal. Three or $4 million on a single transaction. If you sell a $20 million residence and you might be like, that's crazy. They exist, look on Zillow. The realtor gets five-ish percent of the transaction. That's a million dollars and they never own the asset. The next one is that you can find somebody who has an audience, buy whatever they're about to launch early and then sell it later. Now that one does take some money, it's less, but the, the value of the thing later, that's how it balloons. This is how the entire NFT thing worked is that you have tremendous demand for a scarce resource. They have the scarce resource and then it balloons the price because there's so many people bidding against each other to get it. And so getting in early on those types of things, which is why if you buy into something pre-IPO, it tends to almost always go up simply by the fact that there's way more eyeballs that are competing for most times. The next one is selling units of stuff. Super simple, but people don't do the math behind this. I don't even like confining it to a year, but you know, we do live in time. And so I will explain it that way. If you wanted to make a million dollars, you've got 52 weeks in a year. About $20,000 a week is what you got to make. 20 times 52 is technically a million 40,000. 
for the internet trolls. How many different ways can you make 20 grand in a week? Well, you can sell 20 people a $1,000 thing, two people a $10,000 thing, one person every four weeks an $80,000 thing. On a weekly basis, 20 people who have a $1,000 lifetime value. For example, if you have a $100 a month membership and the person stays for 10 months on average, then if you sell 20 of those every week, over time, those will stack up and then you will cap at a million dollars. And the only way to grow from that new million is either you gotta sell more units or you gotta make the thing that you're selling worth more. That's it. The next one is that you can get people to give you their businesses for no money down. A good friend of mine actually did this and he combined four different information businesses into one business and they were all small businesses. They were all doing about a million-ish a year. I get small is relative, but was like, and so he combined them all to be a $4 million top line, million and a half bottom line business for no money out of pocket. He literally said, hey, I know you don't want to do this business anymore. Just give it to me and I'll pay you the income that you were going to make for this business for the next two years. And they said, sure. And so he combined all those businesses together and then overnight he owned an asset that was doing a million and a half a year in profit and four million in top line. And it cost him nothing to do it. He owns the asset now. And so if he turned around and went to say, hey, I'm gonna go sell this, he could probably sell the thing for $5 million put together. It might cost him 2 million bucks. And he makes the three, he made more than a million dollars with no money out of pocket. Understand that the people who are making money don't constrain themselves by time. They're not thinking, how do I make X dollars per hour, X dollars per year? They're thinking, how do I provide the most value to somebody so they'll give me a percentage of the value I provide? Here's another one, is that you can go find stuff that you really like and go promote that. So you don't have to go find and make your own product. Products, you go find products that you really like from other companies and just become affiliates of those products. And the nice thing is that I just recommend you be honest. Be like, hey, I tried a hundred fucking different soaps. This is my favorite one. And here's why. People don't want to go through the time and the money of figuring out which soap is the best for your audience. And if you make the wreck after you do that, they're like, oh, well, shoot, he just saved me time. And so then I'll go buy from him through his link or whatever. And so you can affiliate other people's products and make money in that way without any money out of pocket. And then finally, arbitrage in general, which is a fancy word, but it just means that you sell the same thing between two different markets because they're priced differently. If Bitcoin is 19 thousand dollars in Japan on the Japanese market is $19,100 in the US market. You buy the $19,000 Bitcoin over in Japan and you sell it in the American market for $19,100 and you make $100. Bucks. That's all arbitrage is. And it happens with physical products. It happens with lending money between two parties. If you can get money for 1% and you can sell the money for 6%, you make five is the difference. All of these are different versions of arbitrage, which is just same thing, two markets, two different prices, you make the difference.